Simply posting on social media, fingers crossed, and waiting for business to funnel in, it won't work. Having great content is half of the social strategy, but the other half is actually what most businesses miss when it comes to social media. Now, whether you have 500 followers or 5,000 followers, there are some simple strategies to follow that can ensure you are turning your followers into raving fans and paid clients, regardless of the size of your account. Now, if you're ready to learn how you can turn your followers into paid clients, regardless of the fan club that you've built, keep on listening as I dive into this in today's episode. What is going on, Savages? Thank you for stopping in and tuning into today's show, The Business Savage Podcast. I am your host and your business coach, Cassandra Britton. I am a serial entrepreneur providing a savage approach for entrepreneurs to grow both personally and professionally. I am sparking that hunger that is inside of business owners and reigniting their flame to take their business and their mindset to the next level. Now, being a business owner, it can be very lonely. We ditch our nine to five in hopes of more freedom and find ourselves grinding in a 24 seven when we don't have the right time management skills. Now, this podcast, it is here to give you the strategies to grow your business and your mindset so that you can turn your work week into less hours with more freedom. Now, if you've got a second and you have an Insta account, because I know all of y'all have an Instagram account, please go give us a follow. It's at the.business.savage or better yet, grab the link for this episode and share with a friend who needs to hear this. Also, be sure to hit that bell at the top corner so that you never miss a future episode as they air. Okay, friends, let's do this. So I obviously cannot see any of you right now, but I need a silent hands up or two hands up if this is you. Okay, so you get a new follower on Instagram, right? You're not even really sure how they found you. Maybe it was like a shared post or you had a really good series of hashtags or a reel that was getting better than average traction for you. But regardless, right, you do absolutely nothing about it other than a slight pat on the back that you are increasing your follower count. Congrats to you. You spend most of your time worrying about creating content or sharing photos of your work, maybe client testimonials, and obviously the good old trending reels. And still, you're wondering why you're not making any money off of your social following. You think that you need to drastically increase your followers before you can actually start turning a profit and making money. Am I right? Wrong. If this is what you are still thinking, I am here to tell you that this is wrong. So, so wrong. From somebody who organically grew her social following to 21,000 followers and then it was shut down, and I'm still not really sure why, I can honestly tell you that we have more converting clients now with just over 1,000 followers than I did when we had 21,000 followers. Now, if you are ready for me to explain why, keep on listening. When your followers are following you for the wrong reasons, it really doesn't matter how many you have. Now listen to that again. When your followers are following you for the wrong reasons, aka they actually aren't really interested in your offer or your business, it really doesn't matter how many followers you have. They will never become paid clients because they aren't actually interested in what it is that you're offering. Now, it's pretty hard to convert someone to become a paid client when they could care less about your product or your service. Maybe they just thought you were a good dancer or they liked the outfit that you were wearing in a reel that you posted. Perhaps you jumped on a trending reel or your audience found you through a collaboration, maybe with somebody that isn't even in your niche. They started following you for reasons that are not congruent to the work that you do or the services that you provide. So your conversion rate and your engagement rate is very low. You likely didn't message all of your new followers and try to grow a relationship. You probably just gave a silent fist pump when you saw your followers can't go up and an insignificant sigh when you saw it go down. Now, I like to imagine my Instagram and all of my social channels like a virtual coffee shop. I've said it many times before, and I will say it over and over again because it is a great, great analogy. Now, I want you guys to imagine that you own a coffee shop. Okay, you have somebody enter into your store, you know, whatever the reason is, they found your store, they decided that they were going to stumble into it. But instead of saying, hi, how are you? What can I get for you? You decide to ignore them. 
right? You think that they are just magically going to find value in your offer. Instead of that happening, it actually leads to a very quick unfollow when they realize they followed you from a reel that you posted that really has nothing to do with what they are actually looking for. Now, 50%, yes, 5-0% of your Instagram and growth strategy should come from the power of the content that you create creating a strong brand and understanding your audience and what exactly it is that they need from you. Why are they following you, right? And creating powerful content that's going to deliver them free value until they realize that your power is so great and influential in their journey that they're likely willing to pay you for it. But here is the kicker. The other 50% of the growth strategy is actually engagement, That little simple thing called having a conversation with your followers and being social on an app called social media. Imagine that. Imagine being social on social media. It's mind-blowing, isn't it? I know. But yet somehow so many businesses are missing this component, so they're having difficulty turning their followers into actual paid clients. Now, for all of you out there who think that they are scared to show their face, I am not saying that you have to get your face in front of the camera. If you have a personal brand, I'm going to say it's a lot damn harder for you to grow if you won't let your audience begin to build a relationship with you, which they do when they like, they know, and they trust you. And they do that better when they get to know your face and your personality. Once they feel like they like you, they start to feel like they know you, and then they begin to trust you, which is the point that they will actually buy and spend money with you. But for those of you who maybe have a small business and you don't want to be the face of the company, I hear you. Now, I work with many, many, many small brands that are not excited by the idea of getting their face in front of the camera, right? They're trying to build brand loyalty through trending reels and all that sort of stuff. And videos with their face, it just isn't their thing, right? It makes them very uncomfortable. And they simply just don't want their face to be the face of the brand. And I get it. Now, I'm actually working with a new beauty company whose brand, it's about something so much greater than herself, right? We did an entire brand strategy session. We're talking about the vision of this company. And it's so much greater than herself that she actually doesn't want to be the face of the brand in any way, shape, or form. And not because she's self-conscious. She's not self-conscious at all. This girl actually should be a model. It's simply because of what it represents. And it's something so much bigger than her. So there's an entirely different brand strategy that can get designed to build your brand and create it to that same level of impact without having to have your face be the face of the brand, right? So Firstly, there are many ways for you to showcase your product or your offering without getting your face in front of the camera. So if that is an actual real thing for you, or it just doesn't really seem to represent the vision of your company, I have many ideas on how you can still make an impact, which perhaps I should do an entire other episode on because let me know, actually, you guys, if that's something that y'all would find value in, please let me know. However, I'm going to challenge you to really think about why you are so scared to get your face in front of the camera because it is not all the same instance of this beauty brand that I'm thinking of. You do not have to be a 10 out of 10. You do not have to have perfect skin or perfect hair or have your body in jack shape or be the world's next bachelor in order for your brand to succeed on social media. In fact, some of the most powerful personal brands, I would argue, don't have any of those things. But what they do have is a strong message and constant value that speaks to a very specific audience. They know their audience. They know what their audience needs. They know why their audience follows them. And they have confidence to deliver that to them. They're not worried about what any of the haters think. So here's the thing. You can't possibly speak to everyone. In fact, if you're trying to, you will fail. Simple as that. Not every single person on this planet wants your product, wants your offer, wants your service. They shouldn't. You should speak to a very specific niche. And when we know that, we know their pain points and we know our product or our service speaks so specifically to that pain point, we know that they're going to become raving fans. So here's my solution for you. I'm going to break this down into some steps, four steps to be precise, that seem very simple. And that's because they are. (laughs) Most brands and businesses overcomplicate this entire process. It's not complicated. It's not complex. It's time-consuming. It takes repetition. It takes a lot of patience, but it is not hard. You guys ready? 
Step number one, ensure that you have niched down and that you understand your audience. You know exactly who they are. You know what their pain points are. You know what they want and what they need from you and your brand and how your brand solves their problems. When we don't even know who we're speaking to, our audience becomes incredibly confused and your offer, if it's all over the place, it's confusing to them. Speaking a little bit to this market, maybe a little bit over to this market and then a little bit more to this market, you know, not enough of them will even give you that full F yes that this offer is for me, you know, raising up both of their hands and begging for your offer. So niche down. If you have questions around that, you're struggling with that, send me a message. I'd be happy to help you out. Step two, once we understand our audience, you know everything about them, who they are, what they want, and how we can help them, you then need to create valuable offers for them. And I'm going to say that again, valuable offers, because a lot of businesses out there are pumping out content that they think is valuable, but it's not valuable. And your audience actually really doesn't care about the the content at all. So here are some examples for you to give this a little bit more context. There are many different types of content that you can use for social media. Okay. So we have entertaining posts, which are usually, you know, they've got some kind of like comedic posts, comedic relief to them, you know, it could be funny, it could be a funny quote, uh, a lot of reels, reels, right, the trending reels, the dancing, the, you know, um, lip syncing to somebody else's voice, etc. All that sort of stuff. They're entertaining. Then we have our educational posts, which are the ones where we're sharing tips, percentages, results, facts, you know, all that sort of stuff in our industry that will actually educate our audience on things that they did not know, right? It's educational. It could be maybe a fact or fiction, or sorry, a fact or fiction. I bet you didn't know this. Maybe it's like some commonly frequently asked questions that you hear from your clients, right? So you assume that many of your followers are also going to be thinking the same thing. Now, if there is a certain stigma in your field or that, you know, quote unquote, elephant in the room, I would strongly encourage that you don't avoid that, but you actually address it in your content, right? Talk about it. Be the brand that isn't afraid to share it all and really reveal what it actually looks like behind the curtains. Now, the last bucket that content usually checks off is empowering. It serves to educate, entertain, or empower. So if we are done with educating, right, we've already entertained them this week, then your next content pillar should be about empowering them, making them realize that they are worthy of your offering and capable of achieving whatever it is that your product or your service is promising to them. Now, we call these buckets value. Value is basically tips, advice, knowledge, guidance, information, something that your audience can take away. Maybe it's just a good feeling, right? The entertaining piece. Something that they can take away from following your account that isn't just purely a good laugh or making them, you know, giggle, but also giving them guidance and information that they will actually find useful, valuable, and actionable. So here are some other examples for you. If we were talking about this specific brand, right, the Business Savage, that you guys are listening to this podcast right now, for all of you coaches out there, listen up. This brand is about business, branding, and empowerment, right? I empower entrepreneurs to realize that they are worth that freedom that they desire and give them the tools and the strategies to step into that life, right? So one of my pillars, of course, or pieces of value is talking about that dream life, right? Right? For any of you who follow along my journey on any of my social channels, you will see that we talk a lot and we share a lot about freedom, traveling life, you know, digital nomad life, and being able to craft our own work schedule and work from anywhere in the world. Something that so many entrepreneurs are aspiring to achieve. Now, imagine my account was this and only this. If I didn't share any actual business advice or strategies like this episode, for entrepreneurs to actually grow their business, but instead I was just constantly teasing them with this dream life that they could get. Now they would get very bored of me painting this perfect future, almost like I'm like dangling a carrot in their face, right, without any actual tactical tips or advice on how they could get there too. And they would probably just unfollow or unsubscribe. Okay, so are you talking about your offers? When's the last time you talked about your offer? When's the last time you talked about your product, right? We know that damn rule of seven. It takes somebody an average of seven times to hear about your product, your service, or your offer before they even consider buying. So when's the last time you talked about your offer? Are you making it super easy for them to understand what you do, how you serve, how you help, and what it is that you offer? So my advice here is to your content strategy, you have to ensure that you are delivering value and putting yourself in your audience's shoes. Use words and language that makes sense to them. 
Don't try to sound super smart and scare or intimidate them, but you want to actually be relevant to them. Deliver them educational, empowering, or entertaining content so that you are walking them through that like, know, and trust process just by them being a follower. Now, if they get value from your account, from your mailing lists, etc., they're going to stay and their ears perk up when you have offers available to them because they are already getting such value from your free offerings. Now, step number three is one of the steps that a lot of business owners are missing, right? And this is the relationship process. So tip number three around how to convert your audience into paid clients is to make sure that you are building relationships with them. Be honest with yourself. When I ask you guys this question, when you get new followers, are you messaging them to say, hi, welcome, hello, bonjour, hola, you know, something, anything? In reality, most of you aren't. Back to that coffee shop analogy again, most of you are not saying anything to your new followers. You're spending your time making entertaining, empowering, and educational content, but then you're not following up on that other 50% of the social strategy, which is that engagement piece. So here's some places for you to start. Put it in your schedule to message your new followers every a.m. Go through your new followers from the previous day and send them a message. Welcome them to your page and begin a dialogue with them, no different than you would if you met the person in real life. I suggest having some maybe sample questions written out that you're going to ask your new followers just so that you can learn a little bit more about them and, you know, maybe some starting points to begin a dialogue. The more that you understand them and what it is that they're looking for, the more you can guide them in the right direction for the offer that you have that is best suitable for them, even if it's not paid right away. So many of you listening, I know how you have zero engagement strategy. You're not even messaging your own new followers, let alone reaching out to other new accounts. So let's think about it this way. Your new followers are people who have found you, right? Somehow. If we relate this back to our coffee shop analogy again, these followers, they found your coffee shop. They've walked in. They've decided that they're going to give it a try. But what about all of your marketing strategies on all of the other people who love coffee, who would definitely be interested in what you have to offer, but they don't even know that your shop exists yet? These are the users of social channels that your account has not yet come into their awareness yet. Okay, so we know that they're on social media, but you have to find them. This is called your outreach. This means following accounts that would have a similar audience to yours and engaging with new accounts consistently on a regular, regular basis. Now, there is an entire outreach strategy that I teach step-by-step inside of our Business Savage Academy membership. But for now, this is the Coles Notes version of what you need brought to light. You can't expect people to just find you. And when they find you, that they're just going to want to buy from you. You need to also find them and then build a relationship with them. And my last tip or step, whatever you guys want to call it, step number four, I want to talk about having different offers. Okay, so my last action item here for you is to ensure that you are creating multiple tiered offers for your followers. And now here's what I mean. If you only have one offer, perhaps and it's, a, it's a, an expensive offer, or maybe even, you know, it's paid, your clients may not be ready yet to make that leap from just finding out about you to all of a sudden giving you their credit card number and signing up for an offer with you, regardless of the cost of it. So there's a whole concept around having low to high ticket offers, but we also have to remember the value of a free offer, regardless of the industry that you are in. I've got over 75 entrepreneurs inside of our Business Savage Academy membership, and they are in all different industries from all different walks of the world. They're all over the world. And regardless of the industry that you are in, there are free things that you can offer that are incentives to get your audience on your email list. If we can get them on our email list, they are then going to, wow, shocker, receive your emails, which is an entire other journey. I like to walk my clients through around their email marketing strategies because email marketing has a much higher ROI, return of investment, than social media does. I'll say that again. Email marketing has a much higher return on investment, time and money, than social media does. These clients have raised their hands saying that they're interested in your offer and they want to work with you. So they are much more likely to listen to the value of the emails that you send out. So 
Regardless of your product or service, I strongly suggest that you have some sort of free incentive that gets your audience into your email marketing ecosystem so that you can then begin giving them even more value than your social media and have them working their way up your tiers and your ranks and your offers. Now, whatever your offer is, I promise you, there is something of free value that is a step down from that that you can offer to your followers to get them into your ecosystem. Not having multiple tiered offers is a simple way of missing out on your paid clients. Sometimes they are not ready to buy. Most of the time, they actually need more nurturing. So we have to ensure that your business is set up in a way that provides them with that nurturing without the sales approach so that they begin to walk themselves through the sales process. Remember, the darn rule of seven, I have talked about it many, many times before. It takes the average of seven times before your audience wants to actually buy from you. Okay, they may see your offer. It might not even register with them. So we need to keep hitting them in different ways multiple times before they are going to actually be ready to buy. Okay, savages. So if you are tired of spinning your wheels and thinking that you need a ton of new followers on your social channels before you can start making money, we have now learned that you are wrong. We've talked about my four tips to get those followers, regardless of how many or how few there are, into converting paid clients. Tip number one was to ensure that you have niched down and that you truly understand the needs and wants of your audience. Tip two was to create content of value. Ensure that your content is not wasting their time and actually gives them the value that they find useful or helpful. Put it this way, if you were in their shoes, would you follow you? Is your content actually helping them or is it just flooding their newsfeed with more crap? Sorry, guys, getting savage on ya. Tip number three is build relationships with your audience, regardless of how big or how small your audience is, you cannot ignore them. Build a relationship with them, use engaging content, use engaging polls, reply to comments, do organic outreach, and spend time growing your awareness and relationships with your audience. This is 50% of the growth that unfortunately most business owners don't make time for. And last but certainly not least, tip number four is to ensure that you have multiple tiered offers. Do not just assume that your followers will go from a brand new follower to a paid client in a few clicks. It very rarely happens. You need to have many different offers and a way to get them a part of your ecosystem before we can assume or anticipate that they may actually want to buy our higher ticket offer. Well, savages, that is all that I have for you guys for today. As always, I hope that you enjoyed this episode and now have the knowledge you need to turn your followers on any of your social channels into actual paid clients. They've raised their hand and said that they're interested. So it is up to you to walk them through the process and allow them to become a paid client and give you their money. If you are looking for more support with this process, as always, our Business Savage Academy membership is available for you to check out. The direct link is in our show notes, or you can book a completely free consultation with myself to learn more about the membership and see if it is a right fit for you and the growth of your business. If you enjoyed this episode, please do me a favor and send this to somebody that you know and that you love and that could use these tips. Grab the copy link, text it to a friend, or better yet, share it on your social Instagram stories, so that other entrepreneurs can find us. I appreciate you. Go slay your day. And remember, a savage doesn't let anyone or anything stand in their way. They can get knocked down, but they will always get back up. Keep on fighting. Peace, guys. Peace.